Hey, welcome back folks, it's Crazy Walder, and in today's video we're going to be going over water cooling for smartphones. Now you might think to yourselves, what the heck is this new fad? You know, why would you even ever need to water cool a smartphone? That doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever. And for the most part, you'd probably be right. But the recent trends of people actually moving to play games such as PUBG and Fortnite on mobile have prompted basically a huge inflow of various kinds of developments into cooling smartphones because they obviously get too hot. And as those of us who actually play and game basically know that heat is the killer of performance, especially if you've ever built a gaming PC or if you ever had a gaming console that, you know, basically ended up making a whole bunch of noise fans you know, spinning up constantly, that kind of stuff, because you left it in an enclosed space, you know that typically that kind of stuff is caused by heat and overheating, and that causes a lot of problems, typically causes games to slow down, um, especially more evident on, um, on the PC, more so than on console, but it can happen on consoles as well. But phones are really no different. You still have a processor in there, you still have a GPU, you have a CPU, and all of those things tend to create a bunch of heat. And what you also have to realize is that now that we have phones that are waterproof, that means that there's less of a chance for heat to escape, less places for the heat to escape, and all of that basically ends up creating this whole situation where the phones heat up a ridiculous amount. So what do you do? Well, you end up turning to a cooling solution. Now, there are a number of various ones that are out there today. One of the probably cheapest ones and one of the ones that most folks tend to go towards is the kind of handheld um, device that has a fan at the back and it holds your phone in place. Also typically has some kind of joysticks, but it might not. Sometimes it's just an enclosure that your phone snaps into and allows you to play your games that way while simultaneously cooling your phone down. But what if the air cooling is not quite enough? What if you end up playing something like PUBG and Fortnite, which are, of course, you know, fairly popular nowadays, and they tend to quite, consume quite a bit of power? So the solution at that point is ultimately to go with water cooling, and there happens to be a kit on Amazon right now. I believe they are selling it for $70, and since I recently picked up my Razer phone, I decided I would give this thing a shot. So let's take a look at it now and see what all the rage is about. Okay, so the setup then for this is going to be incredibly simple. You have what comes in the box, which is this USB adapter. You simply plug that into a power socket, really straightforward. There is then also a USB cable that actually plugs into this guy. Again, you know, fairly easy, and they actually tell you where this thing comes from, so you can always go to that link and pick one up if this thing breaks, which is kind of convenient. Um, but I'm sure that pretty much any sort of similar power supply would work. Now, what else comes in the box is they give you the actual pump and water block uh, slash, you know, whatever you want to call it, reservoir all-in-one, um, basically an all-in-one unit. They come with a bunch of different adapter heads that you simply screw in, um, and then you get this cable that runs to the actual block itself, which is a copper block that then sits at the back of your phone. And you can see I really quickly and very jankily kind of attach this thing together and I use some of the leftover cooling fluid that I had um, lying around because, you know, why not? Um, basically made this process really simple, really straightforward. And again, all you need to do is you need to take this plate and you simply attach that to the back of your phone. In my case, it is the Razer phone. Basically, just make sure that it attaches fairly well um, to the back, kind of try and see if you can run your fingers along each side to work most of the bubbles out of the system. Um, most likely over time you will need to replace the pad on the back of this just so it actually sticks to the phone a lot better. Um, in my case it's already kind of starting to come off for the most part, but what you will see is that it attaches fairly easily, really not a problem at all, and by and large you can actually kind of get this thing going fairly quickly. This whole process took me about five minutes to set up and I pretty much never looked back at that point. So. The most important part now, of course, are the actual temperatures that you're going to get out of this thing. It's going to be pretty crucial to see how the phone performs when it doesn't have this piece on versus how it does when it actually does have the water cooling attached to it. Again, since it's not a direct connection to the CPU and GPU, you're not going to be getting the greatest results out of this thing, but with that said, we should be able to get some really good stuff out of this thing once we're all done. Alright then guys, so now it's been probably about 10 solid minutes or so, possibly more, of being in PUBG. It's hard to say exactly how much, 
Um, I've not been paying 100% attention and I'm probably going to die pretty soon. But let's take a look at the temperatures here that, uh, that we can see. Alright, so let's see what the phone is at now. Since I'm most likely going to be dead pretty soon anyway. Flip this guy over. Okay, so we're looking at about 95 degrees. You can kind of see right there. Um, different parts of the phone are a little bit more. Some parts are a little bit less. Um, some parts are at 98. Okay, so that's what it is without any kind of cooling, which is, you know, still not particularly hot, not particularly cold either. Um, but, you know, it's warm enough to the touch where you can feel it. So now, let's take a look at what it's going to be like when we actually connect the cooler to it. So, bear with me here as I get that going. Okay, so we've got the cooler attached now, and I'm still playing, and I can already feel the phone getting cooler, actually, even though it's just been attached. It's quite a significant, um, quite a significant difference, actually and looks like I can't really tell where I'm getting shot from pretty much all over the place so I'm gonna die pretty soon here so let's see now that I've been on here for a while let's see what the uh, what the changes are so you can kind of see that it went down by around five degrees so let's take a look at what it was down here now that it's come off and we're looking at 85 to 86 degrees so again when we're looking at 90 or 95, in some cases that's like a 5 to 10 degree difference just from using the water cooling technology um, from this thing right here. And again, you know, you can totally make your own. Um, you know, all you really need is just one of these cooler plates and then you can just use your own pump. You don't have to use the pump that they provide. Um, so there are various different kinds that are out there. Um, it ultimately just completely depends on how you want to play this. So that's with PUBG. I'm going to put this thing back on and see how, uh, how well we do. Um, you know, ultimately, I think that this game is going to be, again, the one that stresses the hardware the most. I do have a couple of others where, you know, they're also first-person shooter games, but I don't think they're ultimately going to be the ones that push the hardware nearly as much as this game does. So this would be the ideal showcase for this whole system, actually. And it looks like we just won. So let's take a look at the game here in terms of what we've got. Okay, taking off the water cooler and let's take a look again. So hotter parts of the phone right here where it hasn't been cooled, 99 degrees, about 87 where it has been cooled, um, you know, about 88 now that it's being taken off. And so again, you know, you can see that it's about a 10 degree difference in some cases where the phone was actually being actively cooled versus in areas where it wasn't. It makes a pretty wild difference for PUBG. Um, you know, I would say that if you are hardcore into this, and especially if your phone is overheating quite significantly, then, um, you know, this is definitely going to be a game changer for you. Because if your phone heats up to a ridiculous amount, then, you know, again, this will be the, uh, the way to cool it down. Now, let's take a look at some more games and see how we perform in there. Alright, so I just finished up a match of War Robots, so let's take a look at the phone now. So it looks like 111 degrees in some cases, 100 or 98 in others, so it looks like the hottest part is actually up here for the phone. So let's see if I can grab the water cooler, turn it on, and see how the next match goes. So what were the results of using the water cooler on War Robots then? Well, the end result that I ended up getting was 98 degrees in the hottest part of the phone. So I'm a little bit disappointed in terms of how little the temperature actually dropped um, on War Robots. And I'm not sure if that has to do with the fact that the engine is less optimized and it's perhaps overheating the processor as a result more, um, since the actual battlefields that you're on in War Robots are a lot smaller. Now obviously having just PUBG and War Robots is a fairly small sample. I couldn't get Fortnite to quite work on my phone for one reason or another. I wish I kind of done that game as well um, so that we could see the temperature differences there. Now currently what I'm seeing is that also the water cooler itself obviously as you guys see does not have a radiator in it. So the end result is that you don't have as much of an ability to dissipate heat. 
if there was an external radiator involved as well, then that would have allowed for an additional level of cooling. But as it stands, I feel like the device still works really well, and I think you guys should give it a shot and check it out in terms of helping cool down your devices, especially if you're gaming or if your phone happens to be one of those things that actually needs to go into a car and you have it heat up all the time. This would be a good solution for that because you can just keep it under the dashboard somewhere and then keep your device cool that way. Let me know if the video helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions about the water cooler itself or how I set it up. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. And in the meantime, I'll see you folks in the next video.